The following podcast is recorded and produced by the Podcast Precinct in affiliation with the network at BICBP-radio.com. The Podcast Precinct. Consistency. Creativity. Culture. Next Sunday, when it's halftime at the Super Bowl, switch over to Fox for the wildest super halftime party ever, live from Hollywood, featuring safety tips from Fire Marshal Bill. Let's party! <laughs> Stadium bargains from the homeboys. He's slashing prices in half. <laughs> A review of the first half live from Men on Football. Yes, and I'm tickled pink. With music by Color Me Bad. Look at new bite-sized Doritos for your game piece. And you could also win a million dollars during the show. Catch in Living Color's Super Halftime Party live on Fox. We're cooking up something special. <laughs> or watch their halftime show. Hey, Johnny. It's that time of year again. Hold on to the answer to this. Uh, it's not Christmas. It's not Halloween. Is it? I mean, it was just my birthday. Is this? Is this what we're talking about? No. No. Oh. Hmm. I was really wanting some presents again. Or at all, because when you turn 40, nobody gives a crap. <laughs> no. Nobody really does. <laughs> like, you've had enough presents throughout your life. You deserve actually, none, sir. I actually did get a present from my aunt. So I'm not. Oh, well, that's, just, that's just nice. Uh, what I'm saying is, uh, if you appreciate me, send me a little something. <laughs> It was just my birthday. I'm 41, and it's all downhill from here. I so give me something to look uh, forward to. I sent you an early birthday gift. Giant you should, Andrew always, Andrew's always uh, been awesome to me. Uh, Andrew doesn't need to send me anything, because Andrew lets me watch stuff with his password stuff, so me and him are solid. <laughs> <laughs> so I, have- I mean, no, he does it if you're listening to this, Disney, or whoever. Yeah. But do you know what this time of the year is it's kind of a it's a it's a sad time for me i know oh, i know not- why you're sad that's not for me because i never even had a chance uh i you know i'm a fan of a team that twice didn't even score that's not bad uh but you know what Andrew? i've sort of got this this hankering as we say down here in the south this hankering for pizza or some wings or something and maybe that I can have it to watch while I'm watching some big sports thing. You got anything for that? Is there something that can happen with this? Yeah. Uh, the AFL NFL championship. Oh, that's a, we got to have a better name, right? There's, there's gotta be a better name for that. Uh, All right. Let's think this out. Okay. The, uh, the super fun time. What's something okay? You put two things. You can put two things together in a. Oh man, I put them together in a some sort of container, and it's like a really good contain. Oh, let's call this the incredible container. How about more of a bowl? Nah, I don't like that. <laughs> like bowl? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, unless we're talking haircut styles. Then all aboard. I don't think anybody's had one of those in quite some time. We talked about the Beatles in the episode and realizing that 1987 was almost 40 years ago. Yeah. Uh, I vow to you that one day I'll have a bowl cut again. <laughs> It'd be cheaper. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Took my son for a haircut. It was almost $50. Good God. I remember when you could go to get a haircut for 10 bucks. <laughs> I am so happy I'm bald. I'm, after that, I was just so happy I'm bald. Yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm also very low maintenance when it comes to my hair. I like my hair, don't get me wrong, but I don't need it to be the latest style. Just give me a cut, get it out of my eyes, and I'm good to go, my friend. There you go. But today we are talking about sports clips. That's right. We're talking about sports clips. Go get- <laughs> That would have been a great sports clip sponsor. Like, sponsor, yeah. come on! See how good we can integrate the sponsorship. So great! It sounded so great. If you want, and I have a great, I have a great love for sports clips because at one time that I went, this lady who was very attractive was very close to me the entire time. I mean, a little too close, if I'm being honest. And I was like, "How much is this going to cost me?" <laughs> Twenty dollars a song. 
she was great at the, the scalp massage. I will say that. Oh, but we are not talking about sports clips. Not a sponsor, but wouldn't Should mind be. if you were a sponsor. Uh, we are talking about Super Bowl half times. You might be thinking, ah, the halftime show. Well, gotta say, if it wasn't for one wonderful TV show, I don't think we would get the wonderful half times that we get today. Now, Andrew, the reason that the Super Bowl is such a big deal, besides football being the number one sport in America, is that even if you don't care much for football, there's plenty of people who are like, well, who's doing a halftime show besides obviously the commercials? Yeah, and that played a big part in why we get the Super Bowl halftime shows we got today in a way, because uh, just going through some of them, uh, they pretty much suck looking at Super Bowl one. Well, there was a jet pack at Super Bowl one. Uh, so you got the University of Arizona Synthetic, Synthetic Synthonic marching band. I totally messed that up. I'm not even going to try again. <laughs> and then the next two Super Bowls, they're like nothing. We don't need anything. And then, you know, you get like, you get Ella Fitzgerald. And this is still when nobody cares about it because I loved listening to my uncle talk about him watching Super Bowl seven. And it was just him in the living room and nobody else cared that the Super Bowl was on. <laughs> just him with some uh, Totino's pizza rolls. <laughs> So like Super Bowl Seven is just like the University of Michigan marching band, and it's not all this great. We got um, what is it like up with people? I don't know. If I've heard of that, but I don't think it's any much fun. But stuff like that, nothing great. We got the introduction by Phyllis George for Super Bowl twenty. What is that? Twenty three. And it's just or twenty six. You, no, you can 20, no, it's not even Super Bowl. I'm trying to read Roman numerals, and I used to be able to Super Bowl eighteen. By the way, just so the audience knows, Andrew turned his head a little bit to try to read a Roman numeral. I did, like he's shacking a Taco Bell commercial. I have to sometimes, <laughs> but these are the, just the crappy, you know, Super Bowl. Things that would they would we get and the problem- but but as you're saying this, it's reminding me of I, you can look at the halftime show to Super Bowl and watch its evolution, and that tells you how more mainstream the sport itself is getting. Yes, yeah, because also this is one time. That's the, one of the great things about football is it's one and done. Yeah, NBA championship. World Series, NHL Finals, you're just, you got seven games to win. This is one game, so you got one shot. <laughs> you don't lose your chance, and to blow, I try to mess up that whole lose yourself line. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, about, oh, you mean like where Mom's Spaghetti's involved? Yes, where Mom's Spaghetti's involved. It's on my sweater already, Andrew. So, Super Bowl 25, they did kind of do... Ooh, Something a little bit better. They brought in new kids on the block. But somebody got this wacky, crazy idea, Johnny, Mm -hmm. over at the Doritos Corporation. And they went to this little show that you might have heard of called In Living Color. Oh, I've heard of that show. Yes. And they said, hey, uh, Keenan Ivory Waynes, the mastermind behind all of the Waynes brothers having careers. Maybe not so Damon, but Damon's involved, too. And they were like, listen, how about you? We sponsor you because we know people are going to turn away from the Super Bowl halftime. These people have paid millions of dollars, even probably back then, are going to lose. You know, nobody's going to see their commercials because they're going to play some lame halftime show. But we're going to we're going to sponsor you guys. You guys talk about Doritos, put on your little skit and we're going to run this. And he was like, yeah, sounds like a great idea. So they did that. And it ended up being a huge hit. They had a little clock. You can watch this actually on YouTube. It's pretty cool still. I remember watching it as a kid. And they had a little clock and they said, hey, when this hits zero, this is when you know you got to go back. 
to to the Super Bowl. So Fox is nobody. We know this growing up in this time period. That Fox is pretty much nobody's other than married with children, the Simpsons in a living color. And yeah, I'm just gonna throw it out there, even though this is another cult show. Parker Lewis can't lose. And they were like, put on a sketch comedy show, we'll do this for you, and just do what you can. And I guess the Fox censors actually, because it was a live show, the Fox censors actually had a button to shut it down at any time that it felt like it was getting out of hand. And they put on this and millions of people, I guess like, yeah, millions of people flipped over to watch this halftime show. And the NFL was like, holy cow, we got to do something because can you guess what was that, that halftime show that year for Super Bowl 26? After they were like, hey, we hit it big with new kids on the block. What can we do next? Let's bring in Brian Boitano. <laughs> Which is the name I know from South Park. Yeah. <laughs> and and Dorothy Hamill and rapping little kids that rapping to Frosty and everything else. That's what you got. So you got these two choices. You can watch Brian Boitano and Dorothy Hamill skate and do what was it called? Winter magic. Ice cream's football to me. Or you could go over doing Living Color and watch some great future stars on there as well. That's tough. Now, when you say these kids are rapping Frosty, you're talking about the snowman, because that may sway my uh, that opinion is, here. Oh, you forgot about that. Yeah, they are <laughs> rapping about Frosty the snowman. All right, well, you have my answer. <laughs> Johnny's sticking with that halftime show. His love of sketch comedy gets trumped by his love of Frosty the snowman. Well, in my view, they're the same. But that is the one thing that completely changed how everybody looked at the Super Bowl halftime. Is this one Living Color episode where they did it and they brought out some of the some of the great stuff there too. They had the Homeboy Shopping Channel, Fire Marshal Bill. Oh, um, there you go. Jim Carrey where he plays the guy that is um like behind a news reporter and he's always doing something crazy. And I forgot what the other one was, but there was, Oh, men on football. I don't know if you ever remember that skit where they did men on film, which as I'm I going, think it's been a long time. Yeah. As, a, as I'm watching this and as a little kid back then, I did not get any of, I'm, I'm going to say this, any of the gay references that they were saying. Yeah. Where today I was what or when I watched it the other day, I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. Now I know why my mom was laughing so loud and I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> but to combat that, the NFL was like, we can't we can't do this anymore. We gotta get Michael Jackson. And then that is the start of where you are actually seeing actual good halftime shows. Yeah, to the point where now that's they sometimes overshadow the actual game itself. Yes, you know, I mean, I I can tell you all about Justin Timberlake and and the Nip Slip uh, Gate way more than I can about whatever. I don't even remember who the two teams were playing that day, <laughs> but I can tell you that I definitely remember when her her uh, nipple was exposed. That was the Panthers, Panthers and the Patriots. Which tells you, because I'm a Panthers fan. Totally forgot that it was Panthers. I am totally... Uh, oh, probably because we lost. That's probably why I just put it out of my mind. Yeah. There was halftime heat, though. Oh, yes, I remember that. I thought that's what you were going to bring up. Yes. Oh, man. Yeah, oh, WWF was... at the time would do halftime oh, heat. You, you got your Mankind card revoked. I forgot all about it. That was the oh, only man. time I remember switching over is the empty arena match do you think that that's sort of the start of other things trying to kind of capitalize on the halftime show that aren't even on the super bowl like you get the puppy bowl now that type of thing yeah i think because you know that you can pull people away because you could just do anything super bowl it's kind of like when labor day rolls around or president's day in a furniture store it's like come and see our labor day sale or yeah that's it or car place having rocktober i'm know? very curious too what you think of this because you're way more of a football purist 
what do you think of like they're trying even more uh, gimmicks now? Like I saw that you can watch this the Super Bowl on Nickelodeon this year, but it's going to be taking place in Bikini Bottom. I like it. I, mean, I love it. That's I, if I, I watch it this year, that's how I'm going to watch it. I'm just going to let you know. I like all the gimmicks. Like I like the Toy Story game. That one was fun. Yeah. It, it it was glitchy, but what it does is it introduces um newer football fans. So exactly. If I exactly can, if I can grab like I love it when they do the Nickelodeon slime games. Everybody's like, oh, why would you do this? Why would you do it? Because that's what kids we we talked about it on the Nostalgia Funhouse. The attention spans are so short. The yeah, football game is very long and can be kind of boring even to and especially when there's bar- actually barely any football i did not know that was going to be a bikini bottom i'm gonna have to see. yeah it's gonna be <laughs> at, it's gonna be at the bikini bottom <laughs> i'm gonna have to watch i'm gonna have to try and watch both but i think that that's perfectly fine because you want to bring in yes man like the whole which tab- which side note side tangent here that's why when people get really upset over taylor swift thing i, I get it but at the same time guess what there's a lot of little girls now and i've seen a lot of people say this who are like oh i want to watch football now with my dad and it's all because taylor swift just happened to be the game and that's how you do it and if you're an nba fan how many times have they panned over to damn celebrities at an oh all you can't watch a lakers game without it without jack nicholson or anybody jack nichols or anybody else so that's where i'm like you obviously haven't watched nba games how many Uh, and actually nick game without spike lee yeah, exactly. It wouldn't feel right, even. Uh, I also saw this study that somebody did because it was raging. It was uh, raging such a stir in people that uh, Taylor Swift was getting all this attention. But they actually did an average this year of football of NFL football games uh, out of an average of like a three hour broadcast, give or take. There's actually like less than twenty minutes of actual football. And out of that, there's actually less than 30 seconds of Taylor Swift on any Chiefs broadcast. They would cut to her real quick, and that's it. But people, but if you just listen to people complain about it, you think like it's like there's like 40 minutes of Taylor Swift and maybe five minutes of football. <laughs> Completely different. Hey, do you know who won the halftime heat match? It wasn't Mankind. He got hit with a chair a bunch. That was the I quit Royal Rumble. That's actually a very iconic match, too, because The Rock got a little carried away with his chair shots. Went off script, as they say. That's a, um, But it was Mankind. Oh, as he should, because he's the man. Way more of a Mankind guy than I am the Rock guy. Uh, especially right now, Rock uh, let Cody have it. They did, it, they did it again, too. A six-man tag match in 2019. The Alistair Black, Ricochet, Velatine Dream, Adam Cole, Johnny Gargano, and Tommaso Ciampa, who is way better than Johnny Gargano. Um, uh, oh, man, I'm going to, you're going to get, you're going to raise my ire here. Yeah, they they all wrestled it. So Gargano is very good, by the way. Do you, really, really good. I did. Uh, Man, there's a certain podcast I mean you both listen to because he's funny. Yeah, uh, I I gotta say I agree with him a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff though, uh, he's definitely showing his old age. <laughs> Masa Chop is better. Gargano effing rules, and it's not just because he has a great first name. So it's funny that they would run this halftime heat because I'm trying to think what that Super Bowl halftime show was. So that who, well, that's not. The, uh, this one's probably not as glamorous. Was Gloria Stefan, Stevie Wonder, uh, the big bad voodoo daddy. Uh, it shouldn't be daddies. Is it a single daddy? <laughs> and some Glover guy. Oh, but, Donald. But, He's great. I like no, him a lot. But I could see why people watch the halftime heat over this. And then next year, we was like, oh, oh we got to do better. Phil Collins, Christina Aguilera. Enrique Iglesias and Tony Braxton. There's this word that I could see why you can't compete, why they wouldn't do any more halftime heats or any more of these special little shows in beginning there. Because after that one, it seemed like everybody 
you wanted to watch everybody that was going on. Andrew, I told you I had a I had a special present for you. Yes. For this episode. I just so everybody knows I did not tell him what it was. Mm-hmm. When it comes to music, oh, okay. my tastes are very you know. rarely mainstream, I'll say. Yeah. So I'm gonna ask you first. If you, Andrew, could put on your own Super Bowl halftime show, you get three X. Who are you going to hire to put on your uh, Super Bowl show? Oh, my goodness. Uh, (laughs) So I just had, I think they already did it. Why do I think they already did it? Um, uh, First things that came to my, oh, no, that was... Aerosmith and in sync. Uh so I know they're older, but Aerosmith, Run DMC, and either oh no, the BC boys retired. Um and like LL Cool J. <laughs> oh, so you're really going the nostalgia route, which makes yeah. sense. Uh, yeah. newer people I don't really know maybe like post Malone I really think he's pretty good he is pretty good yeah I'd agree with that uh who else is good if I had to go newer um I really don't know anybody that's newer well, I can't uh say any different honestly uh post one <laughs> and post Malone <laughs> a side note one time I did this fun exercise this was a couple years ago so even worse now where I just looked at the Billboard Top 100, and I think I recognized three or four names total. <laughs> so, that's kind of where I'm at. You, uh, so, go ahead. Do you think that, like you were saying before, do you think there would become a point where more people are just going to be tuning into, like, say, a quote-unquote quote unquote free concert? Like, I know people that watch, like, concerts on tape. Oh, especially when much- I tell you what my halftime show is. Oh, what's your halftime show? All right, here's my halftime concert. Just stick with me here. I have us all planned out. I have us all planned out. I'm going to open it with Josh Ritter, and he's going to be singing his song "Another New World," which Is that he's a singer. John Ritter's son? son? No, I, I looked that up too, but it's not. But he's an amazing that really artist. Disappointed me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, he is, Andrew. You should check him out. Uh, but he's a singer songwriter, so he literally just be able to guitar, which is what oh. you want for a big time halftime show. Wait, I he's going to feel the energy coming in, and he's going to sing his song "Another New World," which is all a which is a song all about the ship that gets trapped in the ice and everybody dies. But that's just a starter, Andrew. That's going to lead you right into Sufjan Stevens. <laughs> Who? Sufjan Stevens, who's going okay. to sing? He's going to sing his amazing song from his album uh, "Come On, Feel the Illinois." And his song's going to be They Are Night Zombies. It's an incredible song. It's way more upbeat than the other one. But we're going to close this out, Andrew. He's going to lead right into The Decemberist. Oh, jeez. I knew that was good. I singing did. their the Mariner's Revenge song, which is all about these two guys that get trapped inside of a whale. <laughs> and it's eight minutes long. <laughs> and it's basically a sea <laughs> shanty. That's how we're going to close this halftime show. And everybody's going to be on their feet, especially me. I don't. I don't think that's gonna happen with those. I'm running this by the NFL now, so just so you know, so mine was like way better. Where, like, well, that's a matter of Aerosmith and run. You know, Run DMC come out and they're doing Walk This Way. I get it. Yeah, everybody knows that. And song. then it shuffles into LL Cool J's "I'm Bad." Yeah, I and, get you. And then we can shuffle back to like say like it's tricky or my Adidas. And then go back to LL Cool J for Mama Said Knocked You Out, and then ends with Aerosmith's Dream On. Yeah, you got to do those. I get it. 100%. You're not wrong. <laughs> but what you're not understanding here is, Andrew, it's a sea shanty that's eight minutes long. I'm understanding. And it's like, all about these two guys that get trapped inside of a whale. I'm under. And guess what? One of them's there under uh, mysterious circumstances. Oh, you know, it kind of makes me want to listen to the song, but I don't feel like I got eight minutes of my life to do it. But then again, then again, I listened to like three hours of Jim Cornette. Yeah, see? You got time. I'll okay. send you the link after the show. You tell oh, me what you geez. think. 
<laughs> just like I just let you know, it is one of my all time favorite songs. Oh, <laughs> Dream On's my favorite song, but it's a little. Dream bit... On is I do like Dream On a lot. That's a great song. Yeah. But I think that would be a good Super Bowl halftime show. Do you ever think that? Oh, like I said, like that they're just going to. It, that this is going to become the thing and how are they going to outdo themselves every year? Cause I know Usher is going to be there, but I feel like Usher hasn't been a thing for a while. Yeah. It's really weird. Right. Like I, they usually are. Well, I feel like they're usually more contemporary with their stuff. Right. I think it's always like a good mix. Like uh, yeah, the one year it was Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Eminem, Mary J. Blige and Kendrick. And 50 Wild. cent. I remember 50, 50 cent was there. Yeah. And then his brother half dollar. Uh-huh. <laughs> but Kendrick Lamar, like that's the only one that I don't recognize. Recognize. I know the name, but I couldn't tell you any any songs. Like the weekend, um, every man's favorite Super Bowl. See, see where, the weekend is a, but that's a more contemporary name though. Yeah, and then every man's favorite Super t- Super Bowl halftime show, Shakira and Jennifer Lopez. All right, what's the newest artist you can you can name that you know their stuff? Besides Post Malone. Post Malone. Uh, Young Gravy? I don't know who that is. I only like him because he mentioned Jerry Stackhouse in his song. Oh, and then he's got my vote then. <laughs> That's why you got a name as a Carolina guy, and I'm all for you. He said Jerry Stackhouse, <laughs> and it got me really excited that somebody his age would be like, put Jerry Stackhouse into a song. Yeah. My kids listened to it, and they were like, no, they were like, I have no idea who that is, Dad. I'm like, you, you better know who that is. Put some respect on yeah. Jerry Stackhouse's name. Hell yeah. Um, Kanye is not even there. So I'm going through my uh liked songs on on uh the good old Spotify like list. Um. I got Hank Williams jambalaya on the bayou. They don't like Hank Williams anymore. Remember they? No, that's Hank Williams Jr. Oh, you're talking senior. Yeah, I'm talking. Se- yeah, that's. <laughs> He's literally from the 30s. <laughs> but again, I also love him. Uh, he has some great music. I like the song Superfly by Cootie Bick Fizzle. Those are two different names. Oh, man. Um, so pretty much I have no new taste. <laughs> I uh, young gravy, I know he's recent. I hear about this Jack Harlow guy, but I have not listened to it. Right, I was gonna tell you, here's I just looked up the current as of our recording today, the current top ten billboard one hundred. So let's see which one of these guys would get us to sit there right. and yeah. watch. A Super Bowl halftime show instead of going to do a Russo. All right. Megan the Stallion. I'm going to take a Russo. I'm, uh, I'm going to keep it that way. J- Jack Harlow. You said his name. I don't a know. A name him. I've also heard, but I couldn't tell you any of his songs. Going to take I think I don't. Is he the. Yeah. I think my problem with him is they did a remake of White Man Can't Jump and he plays Woody Harrelson's. Character. That's right. I never watched it, but I did see the trailer I, for that. I don't think I want to watch it. So. Jack Harlow, uh, I'm going to take a Russo. All right, Taylor Swift is on is third. That's a name I do know. I will say, uh, and it seems kind of weird. You're going to out seat. me here. You're going to out me. I'm kind of a Swifty. I'm going to have to. I'm not outing you because now you got to remember, I have a 16 year old daughter. Yeah, so I, I either have choices of listening to the songs like. From Sexy Red and Ice Spice and people like that. Or yeah, I take Taylor Swift. Tal- I, okay, so now you get where I'm coming from. I get it, yeah. I also, side Taylor. note, uh, not too long ago, she put out like a, like a singer-songwriter E type album, and it's really good. So oh, the I, Swift Taylor version. Uh, so I'm putting that out is there. That She's that got is? some... I can't remember the name of it. So would you... Uh, why? Another one? Uh, what about this name? Teddy Swims. Never heard this name. <laughs> I'm going to take a Russo. You're going to take a Teddy Swims? <laughs> I don't even know who he is. I have no idea. Well, what about Tate McRae? Who? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, what about Zach Bryan featuring Casey Musgraves? Couldn't Wait, tell you either of those. Zach Bryan. 
Here's another name that I've heard. Couldn't tell you any of their songs. Whoa. Doja Cat. I've heard of Doja Cat. Doja Cat reminds me of something I would hear about in an anime. Yes. <laughs> That's, I yes. hear Doja Cat and it goes right to anime. Uh, uh, yep. I, I totally get you. Uh, Benson and Boone. Never heard this person. Never heard that. Uh, SZA. I've, I've heard the name. I've never even heard the name to do it better than me. But I couldn't tell you any of the songs. And here's what I've heard of. 21 Savage. But again, couldn't tell you any of his music. I know there is a controversy with him where I guess he was marking cards or something. But He was on a stream with... I don't know the stream. It's a, it's a well-known streamer, not one that I watch. But I know this controversy because I have a little guilty pleasure where I really like to watch... Uh, YouTube drama videos. <laughs> don't worry, man. I'm right there with you. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know any of these people, but it just it sustains me for some reason. They're so good to fall asleep to, too. I'm not going to lie. Yes. It's like a whole I like to, I like to take a nap to them. <laughs> I got but, some good ones that I got to tell you about off air. See okay, good. I'll probably share with you some channels that I watch learning about the YouTube drama about these YouTubers that I do not watch and don't care about, but he was on this stream. They were playing some game live, and as they were playing, he was caught cheating with marked cards, or something like that. And he went back and said that it, he didn't know that they were marked. His team had done it, or something. I don't know. But uh, that's the controversy currently is that he was caught cheating live on a stream. So, what is your favorite Super Bowl halftime memory? All the time I got to see a nipple, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I got to kind of go. I remember that one. Be- and I was even drunk during that one. <laughs> and to this day. How that game ended, I wish I was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really like that one. I'm trying to think what else. Oh, okay. I did like the Dr. Here's Dre one. one. Here's one. This is where it's going to be marked as E. Okay. All right. So damn, I was, was going out with I was going out with this girl. This one Ooh. always sticks in my head. I was going out with this girl. She had uh, a younger brother, but only like a year younger. So, and it was the Britney Spears halftime one. Okay, yes, yeah. And she's wearing a sock. I her. remember this. Yes, and my girlfriend's brother out of nowhere. He loved Britney Spears. Loved Britney Spears. Out of nowhere, he was like, oh my goodness, there's Britney Spears and she's wearing my jerk-off sock. <laughs> so, like, his, <laughs> like his specific one? <laughs> he had to sit it in and she's like, I'll wear this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, It probably looked like it, I'm guessing, <laughs> but just, just the fact that he said it and he said it so calmly and, <laughs> and confident. And it was like one of those things where you're like, oh yeah, cool halftime. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait, what? <laughs> just, just cut this family guy. Just cut this scene of his mom trying to do his laundry and all his six or socks he she couldn't get to flatten out. <laughs> we just really stiff socks. But I have to say that's one of my favorite ones. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> I, get, I get the memory there. I totally <laughs> understand. But from a show perspective, I did enjoy the Dr. Dre one. I but that's for, say, that's yeah. for that's pure nostalgia for me because Dr. Dre and Eminem, uh, Fifty Cent. That was right in when I was like just getting in like a senior in high school ish era. And uh, that was probably when I was most into rap music was then. So that was perfect nostalgia for me. Was that I got to say that was, but I admit I wanted hologram Tupac, but yeah, but I, I get it. Yeah. That's all I needed. That was my only biggest blunder that would have been like, that would put it to a 10. It was still like yep. a nine because I didn't have or like nine, nine point five because I didn't have hologram too. But well, I think we uh, we should go ahead yeah. since the big game is this weekend, Andrew, of this recording. Uh Super Bowl, who do you think wins? Uh who do I think wins or who do I want to win? Two different things. Ah. Uh, just give me a prediction. Mm, who do I think wins? I think it's gonna be the Chiefs. I think when you have the better quarterback, most likely you're gonna be the one that's gonna win. Uh, who do I want to win? I would like to see the 49ers win, but it's only because of like a trivia NFL history standpoint where, yeah. uh, it would work out two ways where 
Ed McCaffrey, Ed McCaffrey and Christian McCaffrey, Christian McCaffrey is playing in the game, will become the only second, or this will be the only second time that a father and a son have won a Super Bowl with the same team. And this has got to be a first of all time that Kyle Shanahan, if Kyle Shanahan and Christian McCaffrey win the Super Bowl, they will become probably the first father and son. Like, okay, so let me back up. So back in the day, Mike Shanahan, who's Kyle Shanahan's father, won a Super Bowl with Christian McCaffrey's um, father, Ed McCaffrey. So it'd be kind of cool to see like the sons win a Super Bowl together after you see the fathers win the Super Bowl together. It would also yeah. make me feel, once again, very, very old. Uh, no, no, ask me the same question. Okay. Who do you think is going to win, John? Andrew, I can't stress this enough. I don't give a shit. <laughs> also, on top of that, I don't give a shit so much that while the game itself is on, I will be finding my favorite jerk-off sock and just finding whatever I can do to pass the time in between this pesky football game. It's like, what's the next new movie trailer? Uh, so there's some great images I've seen of Taylor Swift, and it's obviously definitely her that I can probably enjoy. So, did you do your research on Curly Cup? No, well, yes, I know who he is because I, I research. I'm going to put that in parentheses. I googled okay. him and saw some very like uh, his Wikipedia is what I did. Okay, so we'll say so that. we're going to do our this is our segment, put some respect on this player's name, yes. For me, yes. I think anybody part of those Chiefs defenses of the late 60s, early 70s, 100%. That was a monstrous unit, and it's just its not unfortunate. <laughs> oh, I heard. I get it. Yeah. It's just unfortunate. You can't say certain words. I'm too immature, Andrew. He played you can't say monstrous unit and expect me not to have a quick line about it. Out of respect for our friendship, I won't say anything. You know what I can't handle? You know what I can't handle? And I can't. And whenever I'm like podcasting with Matt and he says Baby Johnson, yes, I can't do it. I'm like, don't say that. He's like, what do you want me to say? I'm like, I'm like, my mind's too sick. It goes to something else. Oh, I get you. That's why I get you here. But. It was a really great defensive unit uh, led by Blue Buck Buchanan's in the Hall of Fame, Willie Lanier, uh, Bobby Bell, just to name a few. And he kind of just got lost in the shuffle, but he contributed a big part to that thing. And I would have to say, when you're talking about NFL history, you put some respect on Curly Cup's name. Yeah, and when I was looking up Curly Cup, uh, it led me down this weird thing of, have you heard about this Dune Popcorn Cup? <laughs> That's an off-air. I think we've done enough with what you're leading to. <laughs> we should put that on a t-shirt. Andrew just telling me that's an off-air. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't Googled the dude popcorn bucket, I, I welcome you to do so. And it's, I'll probably get one so I can have something to do during that uh, Super Bowl game. I won't so eat this How do you sock. feel about Curly, then? <laughs> Hey, I'm all about putting some respect on his name. I'm all about those monstrous units. So his achievements are, you know, Super Bowl, Super Bowl champion, also same year AFL champion, uh, NFL defensive player of the year. Or yeah, NFL defensive player of the year, right there. You gotta put some respect. And he was only one time all pro, four time, uh, second all pro, six time. Pro Bowler, when it actually, I felt like it meant something, that's a great conversation that we can have, too, if these all-star votings even matter anymore. For any of the sports. Oh. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, he is the man, and we put some respect on your name. So if you got anybody that you want to see if we're going to put respect on their name in sports, even wrestling, please yeah. let us know. Even Even – a fictional sports person. I'd say, yeah. Yeah. I've even discussed that. <laughs> Who is the greatest fictional basketball player? 
that it gets heated. It's Bill Murray. I don't know why we're even. Ah, uh, it didn't go that route. <laughs> I'm always a big uh, downtown funky stuff Malone guy. Or oh slash yeah, slash coffee black. The father of post Malone. But if you got anybody you want us to put respect they, on their name, let us know. Fictional athlete, real athlete, any sport, we're up to it. Uh, and Johnny, and follow us. Oh, check out the Tecmo Super Bowl season on our YouTube channel, which the past couple has been getting mega views for my my season with the Cardinals. So please check that out. Uh, and check us out BICBP Radio Network or wherever you get your podcast. And you got anything, Johnny? Uh, let me. I'm looking for my sock. I'm a little busy right now. I can't remember where I put it. That being said, good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Ah, I found it.